Second call of May, postponed a couple of days. Uh, yeah, the May call, I don't know, that 40, 41 minutes is how long the presentation part is. And there is so much, so much yummy juice in there. Oh my God. I was re-listening to it as I was doing the closed captioning. And I was like, whoa, uh, too much to touch on in only one month and absolutely too much to touch on in only 45 minutes. But, uh, just a little recap of some of the key pieces of what I was saying. You know, right now I'm I'm guiding us through the layers of the brain, basically. You know, the the brainstem is where all the animal instincts are, the super basic reptilian instincts, like eat, reproduce, uh, seek heat, uh, shelter, basic things like that. And we've got, you know, that variety of three types of survival instincts and one predominates for each of us based on what was safest when we were young based on other things that we might not fully understand but also based on where the core wounding happened the most if it was between zero and two two and four or four and six uh, and these are the fight flight freeze mechanisms so that was like what we did in april and then in may i wanted to start introducing the limbic brain which is a more complex brain structure it it is it is th it is through the limbic brain that your emotional repertoire is managed so if i just relate that for a second to that whole concept of the the layers around the defense structure that corresponds to emotional uh irrational emotional reaction when someone's getting a little bit too close to like piercing through your defense structure but this part of the brain, the limbic brain, is where all the belonging scripts are. It's where all the ways of belonging in a group, in a family, how to be in a couple, how to be with friends, all of that is governed in this area of the brain, and which is called the mammalian brain, which is like, you know, the brain we share with all warm-blooded animals, from wolves to elephants to, you know, birds to a certain extent. And that's what I honed into in the call three weeks ago. And one little nugget that I started talking about a little bit that I just want to reemphasize is that this is where our understanding of male and female roles are defined. And in a nutshell, in the tribal situation, you have a campfire you have the feminine energy that creates the space of belonging around the campfire. It is the feminine energy that gives belonging to the masculine energy and to the children. And then the masculine energy is there to protect that space of belonging, to protect it and receive the belonging from the female energy. This isn't like some kind of weird, like, oh, so the women ruled and just never mind all that shit. Like, this is just basic understanding of stuff like this. Um, and the way that these roles get understood in our in our little limbic brains, because these are not very big brains, like they're they're very archaic parts of our mind, is that the female energy teaches you how others will treat you. What is normal and how you are how others treat you. So let's say you grew up in an environment where whatever your mom treated you like a piece of shit, then you just kind of like you assess that this is how. This is how I'm meant to be treated. And you will kind of reproduce that in your life. So the female principles teaches you how, how people will treat you in the world, in the family, in the couple, in the this and the that. And the male energy teaches you how to be safe, how to be safe in the world. So I don't know, this is a crazy story. I don't really think I want to, do I want to share that? Yeah, like the, okay, I will, <laughs> I will. The, my grandfather that I never knew, but the, basically the father of my mother and her, you know, she has like brothers and sisters. When the males turned 18 in that family, 
the the dad would bring them for a ride in the car and it was all like oh my god we're going for a ride with dad you know like it's like this big important moment like it's like son you're a man now you know like you're gonna go for a ride and bring bring him to the bar for a beer whatever whatever he would do because they were a little bit grungy stuff like but at a certain point he would he would say okay i have something really important to tell you now something really really important to tell you now just get closer get closer i got Get closer so I can whisper it in your ear. And the 18 year old son is like, oh my God, I'm about to receive, you know, and gets closer, closer, closer. And then the father, the grand, my grandfather, their father would punch them in the face and then say, don't ever trust anyone. Okay. So that is an example of someone teaching a male energy, teaching you how to be safe in the world. It's not a very good one. You know, and they were very mentally challenged from having gone through things like that. But it's it's a horrible example, but I want to give it to you to understand like that for these for these males established how to be safe in the world. You are safe in the world by not trusting anyone. So most of us have, haven't had that, that that intense, you know, we've had fathers. I didn't have a father, but we've had fathers that have given us a model of how to be safe in the world, whatever that means. Maybe you go work, you know, you're a good man, you take care of your, your things, nah, nah, nah. healthy versions of that would be something like that. You know, you, you take care of the ones you love, you protect them, you own up to your shit, you, you know, work whatever you need to work internally to be a good man for your family. And hopefully a, a positive female role would teach you to treat others with respect and dignity, and with care, and love. So this can be an incredible exercise to go through. What were the dynamics in your house as a child? You know, because the way your mother and, and father interacted together and interacted with the children can tell you a lot about some of the programs running, going, running around in your brain about how to be with others, how you're going to be treated by others, how, you, how you're supposed to treat others, and how to stay safe in the world. So that's, I just barely touched on that, but that's such an important piece of that information because that these are emotional dynamics. These are your emotional dynamics with people. And we interact with others at an emotional level much more than we want to admit you know like we're not a bunch of like intellectual brains walking around interacting with everyone only in the noosphere of ideas it's, 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 we're still in a very emotional world very governed by emotions you know which which is good and bad you know because <laughs> until that solar plexus mutation completely happens you know the reality is is that most people their emotions are governed by their instincts their emotions are governed by their brainstem. And the brainstem is all about keeping you safe, keeping your body safe. And these two parts of the brain do not understand the difference between I feel emotionally uncomfortable and someone is ripping my arm off. They do not understand that. And they don't understand either. I was five then and now I'm 40 or 50. They don't understand that either. So all that's like brewing in real time all the time. Something happens rubs up on the defense structure right you've got that kind of complex defense structure that's a bit more established and has like reasoning skills and stuff like that if it manages to go through that defense through that part then it hits the more emotional irrational part of the defense structure and that's what we're talking about we're talking about brainstem and limbic brain kicking in overdrive and then all of a sudden that's what's talking that's what's acting <laughs> and this whole area of your brain is basically hijacked at that point by the reaction. So I don't say this to be like, oh, we're victims of this. I say this so that we understand that's the work. That's the work we're here to do. You calm down these processors, right? You calm down the fear. You f that's the reptilian brain, you flow the emotions, that's the limbic brain, and then, then you have access to reasoning. <laughs> then you get to reason 
okay, what's going on here? Okay, I'm not five. This person is screaming at me. There's a situation going on. How do I want to respond to this? Right? Like you regain access to your cortex. And even more importantly, you regain access to your intuitive brain, which is going to be able to understand a lot more about what's going on at that moment. And that's what we want. We don't want to be, we don't want the evolved parts of our mind to be governed by the archaic primitive parts of our mind. That's not a good mix. It's not a good setup. We see what it looks like in the world. People acting out of fear do a whole bunch of stupid stuff. So the more we know how to work with these when they're flared up and just kind of like come back to center, hold the space, feel the, feel the fear, flow the emotions, like be aware there's anxiety and just, okay, okay, I'm, just, I'm here, I'm here, I got you, I'm here, I'm here. That's how it starts calming down. Then you start reaccessing parts of your mind that can actually help you decide what do I want to do in this situation, right? That's responding. And believe it or not, the more you calm all that stuff down and the more you clear out the programs and the fears and the whatever is going on in the you know, physical body and the nervous system and the outer bodies, once all that's flowing, it is no longer going to be true that the archaic parts of the brain can hijack the more evolved ones. It's super interesting. Like the brain physiology literally starts changing when you're not in a fear band frequency all the time. Like if you ever want to study that, you can read some Richard Hawkins about it. It's incredible. He's talking about how as soon as you hit over 200 in the consciousness level, which is you've, you're out of fear. Now you're in courage, acceptance, willingness. You're going towards reasoning and love. As soon as you pass that 200 mark, the brain physiology literally changes. It, it doesn't go like straight fear, am, amygdala, whatever you call that thing. Boom, 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 reaction. All of a sudden, the cortex starts being able to intervene and, and actually get solicited for information processing. So it's like all of a sudden your brain is no longer governed by animal instincts. I'm not judging animal instincts. I'm just saying... <laughs> We don't want to be governed by them. So, all right. That's just a little mini recap I wanted to do. Today is the day where we do source down downloads and discernments. And I want to do it a little bit, not differently. I want to say differently. It's not exactly differently, but I want to add uh, connecting with the Seiko plexus at the same time as we're doing it. Because that is where emotions are governed. That is where your sense of personal self, your sense of self-love, your sense of self-acceptance, your ability to know that you are deserving of love and pleasure and well-being. This is where it's all governed. So. Yeah, that's, that's what's coming in this morning. I want to bring that one in. And so, wow, I think that's the shortest talk I've done yet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm just going to stop the recording for one second, and then I'm going to start it up so that we can go straight in the source downloads. Anybody watching this on YouTube, reach out if you want to join us.